Hello everybody, Bitwig 4.0 is out for quite some while and it brought us the Bitwig API version 15 and currently we're already in 4.1.1 which is a current Bitwig version with several bug fixes already and new features as well. But something that is not fixed yet is the API documentation. Having a wrong version number, it doesn't say 15, it does say the Bitwig version and it sadly also misses the history. So if you open it up, you have no idea what is actually new. I'm to the rescue for you and I will show you now what's new in the Bitwig API version number 15. So let's dive into that. Mark has got some really helpful functions I was really waiting for. Currently, you could only show markers and start markers, but that's really all you could do. You could not create one and you could not delete one. And that's now possible. The Q markers, which is actually a marker, the Q marker object now also implements a deletable object, which means you can call the delete object function on a Q marker and therefore delete it as well. And talking about deleting, there is now also a new method in the deletable object. And this one can be used with the hardware API. So you can directly bind this action to a button, for example. The getName method is deprecated, but instead we have now the shorter name method, which has also some news. It can now be set, so you can change the name of a marker via your controller. For example, you could prepare a button which directly sets a new marker, which is named chorus or is named verse or stuff like this. So it's up to your ideas what you do with it. And you can also create markers and these methods are available on the transport object. And there is a method called add Q marker at playback position, which means where the playback cursor is currently positioned, there will be a mark created when you call that method, which means the user of your controller script can simply press a button and at the current play position, there will be then a new marker. And you could also set a name for that, as I mentioned before. And the same method is available if you're using the hardware API binding framework and this is then an action. If you have no idea about what this hardware action bindable is, go back and look at my previous videos here on my channel in this playlist for the Bitwig API, which has a little uh, sub-series about the hardware API framework and in that I explain what all this action stuff is about. So let's move on. Also, Transport has two cool new functions. The Arrange a Loop Start and the Loop Duration can now be changed and set and also displayed. So you can get this value and you can set it as well. So you can move now the loop in the Arranger via a controller and also change its length, which is pretty nice stuff to have. Don't forget, if you have some properties here, you need to either call this mark interested function at the init or add a listener instead to make it active. Otherwise, the get method will not work on them if you use the get method. And next one, there are also some little nice properties. One is not very exciting, but might be nice to have. So you have a property for the redo and undo state. You can call this and register mark interested on that if you want to show, for example, an LED for your undo button on LED for your redo button, so it might be helpful. Another function which everybody was waiting for is that you can finally open and close group tracks, which was so far not possible. To do so, you can simply call here toggle on this property and also show the state with a usual mark interested way as well. So this is really pretty nice and something valuable to have in the API now. There's also more actions popping up, which you can use with the hardware API, which makes life simpler if you use this API. One is for the browser, which allows you to select the next file and also the previous file. Also, the insertion point has now an action for opening the browser on that insertion point. If you forgot what the insertion point is, insertion point, for example, is a position for inserting a track or in the grid view to insert a clip on a pad and also some browse actions are there. Just search the documentation for insertion point and you will find where it appears in the API and where you can use it. Okay, and there are some very little additions for the hardware API as well, or which might be helpful, especially for the simulator, which I also explained in a previous tutorial how you can use the simulator. You don't need even to have your hardware with you, you can work with that simulator. 
And there are some little, two little helper functions which just have an additional parameter for this creation method. And this parameter allows you to set an initial value. I'm not sure if that is so helpful, but it's there if you need it. Uh, something which might be a little bit more helpful is you have also in the simulator this piano keyboard and so far you could only set a MIDI input which means if you had several note inputs listening on that MIDI input for example if you have a controller with pads and a normal keyboard and whatever some additional buttons you might have several note inputs and now you can set exactly only the note input which is used for that keyboard that's already it. Some really helpful stuff in there, especially in opening group tracks and as well the marker features are really nice to have. And uh, we are looking forward to the next one as well. So see you when API 16 will be out. Until then, write some funky code.